Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Meets Recording Modular. I have had this patch set up for about three weeks now, I just haven't gotten a chance to record it until today. It's the first modular video of the new year. This patch is to made to show off the noise engineering gamut repetitor, which you can see right here. So what does it do? Well, it takes these trigger ins here. It also has a reset, so you can sort of start the sequence over once you put a trigger into there. And it generates sequences. There's a sequence length, there's a sequence root, there is a sequence spread, so how uh, big the note variations are. It creates one volt per octave, in case that wasn't clear. There's a down versus up, so we start to get into the arpeggiation concept here, which it kind of also does. Um, and then outputs, we have four ins, four outs. We have a root input, which I will show you how I'm controlling in just a second. Is there anything else? Yeah, we got these three switches right here, major or minor, and then one more option, which I'm not going to get into. Uh, the flavor of those majors and minors, and then uh, the count. We actually have a root input and a scale input, and I will show you how I'm gonna be using those in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, make sure I'm recording. All right, so obviously you're hearing a little sequence right now. So this F8R, I'll tell you, I wanna get the 16 version of this because I use this all the time, but here's our scale, here's our spread, here's our up, down, and here's our length, and then this one is set out through a, uh, let's see, a molt and then a tenuverter to control a bunch of stuff. We are using, we're using a Laquelic Mantis. Who else? Rings and plates, it looks like. The classics, I guess. So let's start playing around with this. I'm gonna zoom out a bit so that you can see me touching the control and I will uh, start to explain how this thing can shape performances. Okay, so like I said at the beginning of this whole thing, the gamut needs triggers to run. And I'm using the constellation over here. So as I mute these, you're gonna hear sequences start to kind of fall off. So first of all, let's bring the spread up and the length. The length is uh, a step from one to 32 to infinity. And it's kind of like marbles is deja vu as I understand it. So as you uh, increase the length, you get a longer repetitive sequence um, up to 32 steps. Beyond that, excuse me, am I right? Yeah, 32 steps, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll hear that more once there's more voices in. Uh, and like marbles, you can lock it into smaller and smaller amounts. And then if you don't have any deja vu on or repetitor on or set the step all the way up at the top, then it will just continually create new sequences for you, which is cool. Let's bring in a second one. So this is channel four. You can see it blinking over there, maybe. Here's channel three. Let's go ahead and bring... I'm gonna hit a note down here. This is controlling my root. So as I hit a new note up here, I can change the root note of all of Gamut. Now, from my experience, this thing does not honor the scale mode and scale that you're currently in when you transpose. So it's what I would call like a rude transpose, uh, meaning that you will get accidentals from your original scale. Sometimes that's fine for people, sometimes they don't like it. So just keep that in mind. Hear that sort of classic uh, arpeggiation sound. Now, it's all dictated by how many events I have going on over here. So if I go over to here and turn up all the events for both of these to full 16th notes for each, you can really, really hear stuff going on. So already we're getting something cool. Let's take the length and turn it down. Can you hear that repeating? Got a polymetric thing going on. I can take this down further. Pretty cool, right? transposition where it just kind of like plays a brand new version of the scale. So if you're in C minor at first and you play E flat, you're now in E flat minor. Now we do have the scale stuff. 
So let's go through some of the scales. There's a dizzying amount of scales. And the scales are shown to you, I believe, with this four part LED, not LED, RGB display. Uh, I guess they're LED, RGB LEDs. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, so you can find scales that you want. And there's a whole list of them in the manual. This is our minor ones. Switch this to major. See that repeating sequence? So that's only two of our notes, two of our channels. Let's bring in three and four, or one and two, excuse me. They're a little bit out of order. So here is the next one. Let's change this to dotted eighth notes. You can hear it sitting above there. So it places these individual channels in a, uh, in a way that harmonically makes sense. And that's according to spread. So as I turn spread down, you can hear now they're all the same note and they're only different octaves as far as I know, because we have these tuned to different octaves. So I'll go ahead and turn this one up all the way, meaning all 16th notes. And let's bring in the final one. There's our bass. So you can really just kind of get these cool sequences that you didn't really have to work much for, um, and then shape them with what's going on over here uh, in terms of the trigger events and what you have over here. we start to shave trigger events out, we can get a more groovy thing. So let's do that. I'm going to give our bass a few more notes, and the rest of these a few less. So you can start building a cool groove by shaving those trigger things out. Now, if I was in a different position, a different patch, uh, I could try different trigger sequencers. We have the div skip from uh, making sound machines in DivKit, which could be really cool for this because you could use Euclidean patterns or you could use the drum patterns. You could use whatever you want. Uh, there's things like the Detroit Pink 87, which you actually program triggers in yourself. There's a module from Shackmat where you can type in your own uh, patterns as well. So you don't need this to be completely sort of algorithmically generated. You can have a lot more control on it if you want. But I think one of the advantages of this thing is that it is this way. I think this is one of the appeals. So one of the things that I am not a huge fan of necessarily is the lack of honoring of the uh, the scale mode. Uh, I'd love to be able to transpose these in a particular way, but I also understand that that's pretty hard to do. But yeah, just like you can get all these really, really interesting new things. Like, I have no idea what's going on here. Let's turn the length up. repeater in a nutshell. It's pretty easy to just get in there and start using. And I think it really, really shines with some external controller. 
because it gives you a chance to play it. It's very, very, very playable, but obviously with the you know smaller, more compact interface, it's more difficult to do that uh, without a controller. So if you're thinking about putting this in a performance case, which I think it's really, really, really good for, then I would recommend getting something like the F8R. Uh, this, this one, by the way, because I think this is an integral part of the performance, this one that makes things big is going into a molt. The molt is sending it into a passive attenuverter. Actually, no, excuse me, a passive attenuator. Let me zoom in on this real quick because I think this is a cool thing to add to the performance. So this control right here, set to zero to five volts. It's going into a molt right here. And then that molt is sending out one, two, three, four, five versions of itself. So it's going up into this passive attenuator, the QFM here. You don't even have to plug it into your case. It's just completely passive. And uh, I have these controls set at different values. And that's because these represent the values, the high point that things like Laquelic, which is above that, and Manus will get, because those don't have any attenu version on them. So I set the values that I want those to go to here. Things like plates and rings have a 10 version on them, so I don't need to worry about that. But yeah, this is a way to take one single control, turn it into, you know, at least four or five through this thing, set the values you want, and send it out to whatever modules that you want to affect. It's a cool way to do, cool way, cool way to do performance stuff. And that is my quick, dirty video on the Gamut Repetitor. It is a, have I been saying Gamut Repeater? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna have to flash on screen gamut repetitor every time I mispronounce that. Uh, <laughs> here's my video on it. Uh, this is on loan from Noise Engineering. I asked them to borrow it for this video. Uh, so thank you, Noise Engineering. Um, people were interested in it in the comments from my last Noise Engineering video. So is there a module that you would like to see a video on? Let me know and I will see if I already have it or if I can reach out to the manufacturer to get a loan one to do a video on. Yeah. That's it. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Me's Recording Modular. Uh, talk to you soon. Happy New Year.